Now for the 22nd time in the 52-year history of the AP poll, numbers one and numbers two have come together. And number two has been doing very well. They have won four of the last six confrontations, including two last year. Miami beating Oklahoma, and then it was Penn State over Miami. Now coming your way, it is number one Nebraska and number two Oklahoma. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. Nebraska and Oklahoma, between them, they have won eight national championships, six by the Sooners. For Oklahoma to win it again, they must beat Nebraska and then go down to the Orange Bowl and take care of Miami on New Year's night. Nebraska has an extra game remaining. They must win here this afternoon at home and then beat Colorado next week in Boulder. And do not forget the Buffaloes upset Nebraska a year ago. And then for the Cornhuskers, if they do that, it will be down to the Orange Bowl where they would play Miami for the national championship. We've got so many storylines here, Pat Hayden, but let us start with the outspoken Nebraska quarterback, Steve Taylor. I'm surprised. Well, this is a very confident Nebraska team, and they're expressing it more than they ever have in the past. Now, Steve Taylor, a week ago, was quoting as saying that he didn't think Oklahoma could stay with them the whole game. And believe me, folks, I was in Norman, Oklahoma this week, and that was plastered all over the athletic department. And in particular, it was in every defensive starter's locker. Now, Brent, I like confidence in a quarterback. I think you need that to play the position. He's got confidence and the ability, I think, to back that up. And, of course, the entire Nebraska team has reflected that. When we watched them in practice this week, they were extremely loose, somewhat looser than they've been in the past because Coach Barry Switzer generally is the looser of the two coaches. Now we close in on game time, and what about Steve Taylor's mood? Let's go down to John Dockery. John? Thank you, Brendan. In a few moments, Steve Taylor and the team will come out of that tunnel. You see them behind me, and he'll have to back up those words. But I sense he's not very worried about it. I tracked him in the warm-ups. His demeanor, that low-key, layback approach, wasn't any different. He went about his preparation in a very business-like manner, almost like his coach, Tom Osborne. So I sense, as I saw come to his lips a couple of times, that Steve Taylor is looking forward to being on stage here today. Now back to you, Brent. All right, John, behind you, number five, Brian Washington, one of the 30 seniors who will be introduced to this. One of the classiest coaches in the business, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, congratulating his seniors. John Kelly being introduced. Doug Dalton, number 45, will be next, and they come pouring onto the field. You know, here at Nebraska, they are referring to this as the game of the century, chapter two, if you will, referring back to 1971 and that classic. Down in Oklahoma, they probably refer to this game as the Battle of Wounded Knee. They have lost not only a quarterback and a fullback, but also the coach, Barry Switzer, is hobbled over there on the sideline. But on the field, it'll be the quarterback and the fullback whom they miss, Pat. You're right. Rodney Anson will start at fullback again this week, and he's run the ball the last two weeks in replacing Lydell Carr, but he's fumbled the ball five turn times. That concerns Barry Switzer. And Charles Thompson, well, he's all athlete. Now, you miss his experience, of course, but he's just as good a runner as actually quicker than uh, Jamel Holloway and a better thrower. Very concerned is, is Barry Switzer is concerned about his experience in a big game like this. All right. So let's go down now. John Dockery is dashed across the field. He's in the tunnel where Oklahoma is. And what about young Thompson? Brent, the thing that strikes you most as I wait for the team to come out of the locker room here about Charles Thompson, two things really. He is very small, 5'9", 160. The question is, can he take the pounding? The other thing is his frenetic kinetic energy, something that Barry Switzer worries about. He does things at such an accelerated pace, he really has to slow down so it doesn't hurt his team. I watched him in warm-up. I saw a guy that was a little bit anxious, but he wasn't frightened, and that is a major distinction. I think he's looking forward to his day, and he may surprise some people, Brent. All right, John, and the rest of the seniors, there's Rod Smith, number 88, and a fine wide receiver being introduced to the crowd. They've sold out every game since 62, and across the way, Barry Switzer, and the Oklahoma Sooners coming out of that locker room. Those final moments before a confrontation. You work out the pregame jitters. Normally Oklahoma very loose. But now they're big defensive lineman. Number 99, Neil Smith on the other side. And here come the Sooners.
co-captains will meet in the middle of the field. We'll have the coin toss. Slowed by that knee injury. Jamel Holloway in front of him and at the coach's left. it back in the end zone and so Charles Thompson the freshman will come to work seen some off tackles in this direction Jackson splits far to the top of your screen Avenis is at the bottom Thompson looking for Jackson cover the first down fumble out of bounds Oklahoma's ball he has the first down Is that a face mask? It's complete. He was grabbed up around the helmet. Seven. Right ahead, and the Cornhuskers say they got the fumble. Couldn't get a receiver open, gets a crushing block on the outside. Taylor gets a first down. What a block. John Jones was handled on that play. They're very talented inside linebacker. They pushed him out. Now they turn Jones again and he explodes. Touchdown, Nebraska. Stations. Through the years with Coach Switzer, he has had some replacements and they have been good ones. Thomas Lott, Holloway himself, replacing Troy Aikman, and now with that broken leg. Now today is Thompson. Aikman transferred from Oklahoma and has had a great year at UCLA. You know, Oklahoma is the only program in the country that can send away a future number one draft pick, maybe a Heisman Trophy winner, and not miss a beat. Sooners on the move again behind Thompson. Here they hit Collins on its third down so far. Thompson with a late pitch and a dangerous one. Great defensive play by Tien. 